My Seven Chakras, episode 236. Our eyes are not simply viewers, they're also projectors. The Seven Chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, host and founder of My 7 Chakras, the show where we dive deep into the ancient world to uncover nuggets of wisdom that will transform your life. So if you are listening for the very first time, then know that you have arrived at the right podcast. My goal with this show and in life is to help you take action. So if you are a regular listener, if you are an action taker, uh, then make sure you help us spread the word of the show by sharing something on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag my 7 chakras and hashtag action taker. Hashtag my 7 chakras and hashtag action taker. If you learn something new through the show, if you feel a new sense of courage or determination, if you feel a shift, uh, then take a moment to share your feelings on social media. So let's make a positive uh, shift and make good use of social media and help change other people's lives as well if you are new to the show then welcome to my seven chakras Uh, uh, i also welcome you to our facebook group called action tribe it's not an open group you'll have to access uh, request access and answer a couple of questions but i do that to ensure that we have the right people in our tribe the link you need is my seven chakras.com forward slash tribe it's super simple it's our website forward slash tribe uh, uh, so that it's easy for you to remember. And with that being said, uh, I'm now ready to bring you our special guest for today. For today's special interview, our guest is Jennifer Taylor. So Jennifer, are you ready to inspire? Um, yes, I'm ready to inspire. And thank you so much for having me on. Wonderful. Jennifer is the CEO of Quantum Touch Inc., an organization that teaches energy healing workshops around the world. Jennifer is an energy healing practitioner and a self-help motivator. While working on people, she started to feel the energy fields emanating from people. She became fascinated by energy healing and studied various energy healing modalities, including Reiki. She met Richard Gordon, the founder of Quantum Touch, at his lecture on Maui. She fell in love with the vision of Quantum Touch and received a very clear message from the universe that energy healing was her true calling. She took over as CEO of Quantum Touch in June 2002. She has been running the company for over 15 years and is excited to talk about effective ways to grow a business even in difficult times. So Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us once again today. Great. Well, thank you. I'm I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Awesome. So Action Tribe, this is Jennifer's second appearance on our show. The first time she appeared was way back on episode 131. And today we're recording episode 236. So that's over a hundred episodes. If you want to catch up and make sure you listen to her first episode, which you can do so by visiting my 7 forward slash 131. That's my 7 forward slash 131. But if you are a regular listener and you have listened to that first episode, then let's begin. Uh, Jennifer, let's begin with a dose of some inspiration. What is your favorite inspirational quote and how does that apply in your life well my uh, my favorite inspirational quote change on a daily basis and today since i'm musing upon the law of attraction um the quote that i want to present today is when jim carrey said our eyes are not simply viewers they're also projectors meaning that we create our experience based on our own energy and um i've been focusing on that today of how do we actually create a reality and um I love that quote. So thank you. Wonderful. Thanks a lot for sharing. I love Jim Carrey. It's so fascinating. When I was a kid, I used to love him for his movies, which is like Ace Ventura um, and all those and the mask and stuff like that. And it's so fascinating that over the years, he has become more and more spiritual. And I love his speeches and his quotes. Our eyes are not just viewers. They're also projectors, action tribe. Keep in mind your thoughts, your emotions, all of that contribute to your own version of reality. So keep that in mind as you listen to this episode and some of the amazing insights and nuggets that you can use in your life as well. So Jennifer, let's dive in. For someone who might not have heard 
about quantum touch before what exactly is quantum touch? Uh, quantum touch is it's a modality. It's uh, like some of those other modalities out there like Reiki or healing touch or anything that works with the life force energy to facilitate healing. And um, I think a lot of people out there aren't quite yet familiar with the idea of life force energy. So I'll just delve into a little explanation of what is energy. Sure. So, yeah. So energy, I believe personally that energy is who we are as spirit and who we are as body integrated into a field. And um, so what that really means is that at every moment of our day, like our physical reality is a reflection of the patterning, the energetic patterning within ourselves. So, um, and I believe that's a reflection of our spiritual nature, our true calling in life, our um, what our soul path is also like what's going on physically our physical vibration our diet our thoughts our feelings our emotions this huge um, mesh of who we are and so energy medicine strives to address our energetic being and that includes you know what is our spirit doing um, and, and what's going on with our body from a vibrational perspective so it's, it's a wonderful modality because a lot of times, because we get to the root patterning behind an issue, the issue usually resolves. So let's mm-hmm. say you have knee pain. You know, so, so one solution to knee pain is just take a bunch of medication and, and yeah. you know, cover up the pain. That's one solution. And usually what I've found with that solution is taking pain medication is usually temporary. Either mm-hmm. the body will adjust to it or the pain comes back when you stop taking it. So, so really, what you want to do is get to the root cause, like figure out what's really going on with your knee. And um, what we've discovered is a lot of times there's there's a vibrational frequency behind the pain that when we uncover and get to the root of, we can shift it, and then the pain goes away. And that's what I mean that we create our reality based on our vibration because that's really generating the knee pain. Um, and I love getting to the root cause of that kind of stuff. Got it. Thanks a lot for sharing. There you go, Action Tribe. It is a modality. And life force energy is who we are as spirit and body integrated into a field. So I love that definition. It's like the electricity of life that fo- flows through us, giving us life. And all our thoughts, feelings, emotions, Whatever we eat, our diet, all of that affects our life force and our overall vibration. So, Jennifer, uh, taking a couple of steps back, going back in the past, how did you first hear about Quantum Touch? Uh, So, I first actually heard about Quantum Touch when I saw on a website that Richard Gordon, who's the founder, was giving a lecture on Maui. And Mm. I was just surfing the web at work. Because yep. I was really interested in energy medicine, and I was doing what I was not supposed to be doing, which was playing around at work. Okay. And uh, I saw this lecture, and I'm like, oh, I better go, because yeah. I was really drawn to go. And um, so that's how I first discovered it. I met Richard at the lecture, and that was in 2002. Wonderful. So you, uh, you, you know, you you took action towards, uh, you know, wherever you want to. You wanted a head, right? You want you felt that there was something missing, and you were surfing, uh, you know, the website, and it's wonderful that you were actually in Hawaii, right? So surf is very synonymous with Hawaii, but you were <laughs> surfing the interwebs, and uh, you ended up at the workshop where you met Richard Gordon. So you've been running Quantum Touch for, uh, I think, over 15 years now. Uh, so, so what has the experience Just been years? like for you? What has the experience of running this company been like? Um, well, in, um, the experience has been very difficult, especially with the money piece. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really believing that if you do what you love, the money will come. And I was following my heart and doing my passion, and, and I was really struggling with money. In fact, I managed to dig myself into a, a hole of $135,000 of debt both with my personal debt and business. Mm. So um, even though I was following my heart and I loved what I was doing, I, I just I was struggling with with the business side immensely, and um, that was the big challenge. So now I personally believe that challenges aren't there to completely discourage us and yeah. say, okay, you should quit. I believe challenges are there, especially when you're following your heart and doing your passion. I believe challenges show up as a way to help us grow, 
not as a way to discourage us, although it can be discouraging. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm sure many of our listeners right now are facing or uh, confronting some s- sort of challenge or the other, whether it's financial or health or relationship. Uh, but so true, challenges come in our life for a reason, for to help us grow. Now, you know, on that very note, uh, talk to us about how did you end up getting the role of CEO for running Quantum Touch? What's the story behind that? Okay, so after I met Richard at the lecture in Maui in 2002, I had I received a message from the universe. The universe said, by the way, you're supposed to be running his company. That's your next life path. Yeah. And um, it was a bit insane because, first of all, I didn't know Richard that well. In fact, I just met him. Yeah. So it, it would kind of seem kind of weird to go up to Richard and say, hey, by the way, I'm your your new CEO. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that was kind of weird. Um, the other thing was that I didn't know if Quantum Touch had any job openings. And then I actually did have a job at the time. I was working in uh, software on Maui, writing software. So, you know, I was a little hesitant to, to leave my job. It was really secure. I had a lot of, you know, I got paid really well. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that um, I just, I didn't know how to make that happen really, but I kept on following, you know, my, my guidance. Mm-hmm. And so I started hanging out with Richard, and then uh, Richard and I started a relationship. And so I moved in with him in Santa Cruz, California. Mm-hmm. So I left Maui. I quit my job, um, moved in with him. I was just following my heart. I just kept on following my heart. And um, after about a month of living with him, uh, the the person who was running Quantum Touch at the time said, uh, you know, I need to quit because Quantum Touch is failing. And uh, I need to get a secure job. And, and Quantum Touch was on the verge of going out of business. I mean, it was really struggling. So um, she asked me, she said, would you like to take over as CEO? And I, and I said, sure, why not? So that's how it, that's how it started. And, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely I, – I adopted a failing company basically – to start got it and of course as on today it's such a huge company with a global community of over 50,000 people so how many employees are there at quantum touch as on today um let's see we have uh three basically full-time employees yeah and then we have a lot of different international liaisons who are contractors and we have also um a couple of contractors in our curriculum development so we have quite a few people involved uh if i had to count um at least like 11, maybe 12 or 13 people who uh, who work for us. So it's a definitely grown for sure. Got it. So, of course, loads of growth over the last 15 years. My question is, what were some of the keys to growing the Quantum Touch movement? What are some of the things you focused on early on that helped it get to where it is now? Because like you mentioned, when you sort of uh, came in, it, it was uh, facing a lot of challenges, especially financial challenges. So what were some of the keys uh, from your perspective to growing the Quantum Touch movement? So the key, I feel like, to basically any problem um, which I learned to apply with Quantum Touch, is um, what I call the victor, the victim-owner dichotomy, meaning that it's the willingness to take ownership of everything and mm-hmm. stepping away from being a victim. So my first response to problems is like, oh, why me? This mm-hmm. sucks. You know, it totally sucks. Like, I'm yeah. suffering here, and it's someone else's fault. It's the universe's fault, or it's my business partner's fault, or it's my my employee's fault or blaming everything for the problem. Mm -hmm. And um, I did that a lot initially because it was always seemed like the problem was beyond my control. I blame the universe. You know, I blame the universe saying, all right, universe, you're supposed to support me. Come on. Yeah. And um, so that was, that was the first issue I had to overcome was if, when there's any problem, whether it's employee drama or financial problems is, taking ownership of it and that means for example recently I had a little bit of drama with a couple employees and instead of saying all right you guys sort it out yourselves I looked at myself and said well why is there drama like what how did I contribute to drama among employees Mm -hmm. and I realized that what the problem was was that our process wasn't well defined Uh, creating drama so, so it's really like taking ownership at that level. It's like looking at if there's anything going on, even if it seems unrelated mm-hmm. to you specifically. So if it's still 
Like as a business owner, if there's drama in your company and you're not directly involved, still taking a look at that saying, well, how did I contribute to that? And you'll notice that if you trace it back, uh, it can usually be rectified from your position as the owner, even if it seems somewhat unrelated. And money is the same way. I think a lot of people out there are feeling like they're, they have no way. There's like no hope. Like right. they've lost hope. There's like they're stuck. Like it's the system or taxes or President Trump in the United States or, yeah. you know, whatever. There's something to blame or their job doesn't pay enough or housing costs are too high or like all that stuff. Um, if you step out of that blame and, and realize, wait a minute, I got this. You know, I can I I'm responsible for every penny I spend. I'm responsible for every penny I earn mm -hmm. and, and learning to really taking ownership of that. That was the biggest, biggest um way that I uh, learned to effectively face challenges was really taking ownership for every aspect. Can't even blame the IRS. Can't blame the government. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't blame the stock market. You know, you, you got to get out of that blame mode no matter what's going on. Even you can't blame a flood, mm -hmm. you know, or a tsunami or a hurricane. Really get out of that blame no matter, no matter, even if it seems insurmountable, step out of the blame thing. That was my biggest lesson. Got it. Thanks a lot for sharing the victim owner dichotomy uh, action tribe think about it in your life as well there's a tendency to blame somebody else for the problem uh, because like jennifer shared the problem sometimes especially when it seems beyond our control maybe the irs or the government or you know policies or things that are beyond our control uh, you know it feels like you're helpless but as soon as you take ownership of everything around you and you try to find out you know what in the problem may be stemming from me that's when you feel more empowered and you can actually actually tackle the problem i love the example that you shared jennifer about the employee drama instead of asking the employees to sort it out themselves what you sort of try to figure out is what is the root cause of this issue you know you got involved yourself and you took ownership of it and you realize that in fact it's not a personal problem or an employee problem it's a process driven problem and by solving the process you're able to overcome the drama and also ensure that it doesn't happen in the future right because as long as people follow a process everything seems all right so thanks a lot for sharing that yeah that's a big thing with business there's a lot of times um you know there's a tendency sometimes to really I don't know, like in the past, I used to do this more. I'd like, I'd go into more blame with the employees. Um, something like, oh, they did that wrong. Mm. Why weren't they paying attention? Or, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I would, I would have the wrong thought about, yeah. you know, putting the blame on the employees. And now it's like, oh, they didn't do that correctly. Where did I fail to train them? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, yeah. they're, they're good people. I mean, if you think about it, everyone you work with, you know, they're, they're good people. You hired them for a reason. So it's usually not anything that they're doing it's usually some kind of process that you set forward that was incorrect or a, sure. a gap in the training or you know so so getting out of that blame thing yeah and realizing that yeah that's your fault you know <laughs> it's like yep. yep i didn't train that person uh, yeah <laughs> so yeah but also as as a ceo and as a leader that that does not come really easily right i mean it's really easy to blame but what you have done effectively is that you are trying to figure out the experience that the employee is facing by you know, getting into his or her shoes. So that requires a lot of empathy, isn't it? I believe that that when you can look at somebody else um, and how they approach life from their perspective, whether it be your partner mm -hmm. or your pet or your employee, you know, and try to understand, like, you know, why did that person do that? They were, you know, they're good people, right? It's not like you've hired a, a bad person or a irresponsible yeah. person. It's like, a, why would a good, decent, kind-hearted person do that? Or why would my pet, like, poop on my floor? Or, you know yeah. what, when something happens that you don't like, like, why would that person do that? There's usually yeah. a very reasonable explanation for it. Mm. Uh, when you get into their head, there's usually a very, like, they were acting, they were trying to do their job. Basically, they're trying to do their job. Yeah. And, and they were just not you know, you, you didn't define it properly as a boss. That That's usually what the problem is. So mm -hmm. 
Got it. Yeah. Got it. Really valuable. Now, from moving, from talking about uh, you know processes and the operational side of things, uh, I want to talk uh, about the marketing because I'm sure that from a marketing standpoint, it's critical to have those advocates and those people who uh, you know uh, are interested in learning about quantum touch, maybe reading the books or taking the workshops, the wonderful workshops. So, what methods or platforms do you currently use to sort of spread the word of quantum touch uh, to your global community currently? <laughs> Well, marketing is such a great question. Thanks for asking about marketing. <laughs> yeah. I believe that everyone who does marketing, because marketing is a piece of business, but only do marketing stuff that you actually love to do. So mm. let me give you an example. Sure. Um, there's a lot of different uh, techniques out there that talk about you know, doing sales funnels or using um, Kajabi or other things that yeah. mar- you know, work the process. Now, I believe that if somebody's really drawn to do that, that's awesome, you know. But I think I think what happens is a lot of people say, like, "Oh God, I gotta do this. I gotta create this platform, and I gotta do this." They don't really want want to do it. Yep. And I found that when you're working with higher energies and spiritual energies, that if you're you're doing something with marketing you don't really want to do, it's usually pretty ineffective. I think that's sure. where people get frustrated because they look at marketing and say, "Well, it worked for that person, but it failed." for me so what's going on yeah and i believe and i've learned personally that when i've done marketing stuff i didn't really want to do it just didn't Mm. really work anyways so i just was wasting my time because if your heart's not behind it people know that you know people feel oh god that person's not really into it um so now for marketing i just do stuff i like to do and personally what i like to do is radio shows i love radio and uh, interviews and it's super fun and um and so does my business partner richard he loves shows Mm -hmm. so we do a lot of radio promotion and um that seems to work really well and another thing that i like to do but not everyone may like to do this is is email promotion i believe it can be really effective if you love it is you know mailing out to your community fun messages or upcoming things um I personally love it, and I think it's really effective. So, but people may like other things. Some people may enjoy connecting personally to people. Like, let's mm. say you're trying to build a practice. Maybe you like to go out and just meet people. Like, you're at a party yeah. and you, you know, meet people. That can be really effective if you like it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I'm personally not into that as much, but I mean, there's there's a good marketing technique for everyone. Got it. So, yeah. So when I stopped trying to fight it and stopped trying to do things I didn't really enjoy, our yeah. business actually did better, you know, did better. Got it. So, so many things over here. Thanks a lot for sharing. And it's so true, you know, in the marketing world, there are so many ways in which you can get your word out. And it seems like there is a expert for everything. So you have people talking about funnels or Facebook marketing or Instagram marketing or Pinterest marketing, you know, interviews, email promotions, and uh, also selling from the stage or marketing from the stage, right? And uh, I I think what you really touched on is the fact that you need to analyze all these different marketing modalities and then find out which one resonates with you in your style the most. And uh, uh, for me early on, you know, I also love doing interviews. I love doing radio shows. Uh, I wasn't that inclined towards blog writing initially, you know, and so mm-hmm. I realized that uh, you know, by me talking and interacting and making connections, that's what I really love to do, and that's what I focused on. And in in your case, it seemed like you and Richard also loved uh, love radio shows and interviews, and that's why you are on the show, which is which is just a wonderful way of uh, really connecting with the listener through stories and trials and challenges, and and in what you know what you found out was working and versus versus what's not. So I love the narrative way of sharing your story on radios and you said that you love email promotions as well Uh, you know mailing out uh, fun messages talking about quantum touch sharing stories and events and uh, and things like that so there you go action tribe Uh, if you are looking to grow your business uh, you don't have to do everything find out what modality works for you and then just learn it and do it so thanks for sharing that jennifer yeah i love that because some people don't don't like email marketing or some people don't No, I oh, personally yeah. don't like sales funnels. Never, never got into it. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I don't, I don't, I don't force myself to do those anymore, you know? So whatever yeah, resonates. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now I want to talk about the jump that you made now and you've alluded to that, uh, you know, before in this interview, the fact that you were in software engineering before, and then you made a shift to energy medicine and sort of human engineering, right? So, uh, <laughs> 
uh, what were your thoughts behind that? How did you make that jump from software engineering to energy medicine, energy healing? Yeah, so basically, when I I started out, um, I started working as a software developer, and I got a, a degree in computer science. Okay. And what I noticed right away is I didn't really like my job, and mm. it just wasn't a really good fit. And, and um, some people love software, and I had great bosses and great situations. I just personally didn't like love the work. And I felt like there was something else I was supposed to be doing with my life. I felt like I had some true calling. I'm sure all of us feel that way on some level that there's like we have a purpose. Mm. And I felt like I wasn't living my purpose. So that that was kind of the underpinnings of making it easy to leave because I really wasn't resonating with my job as my true purpose in life and I knew it was sure. out there. So when I when I got into energy medicine, uh, I you know, I started uh, I went to massage school and I started that and I really got into energy medicine. I loved it. And I really understood that energy medicine was my life purpose. Mm. So here I was doing software, which wasn't feeling drawn on a heart level towards energy medicine. And so it made it easy for me to jump because when the opportunity arose, I was ready. I knew what my purpose was. I knew that jumping into energy medicine would be fulfilling my life purpose. So, and I was also depressed pressed at my job. So mm-hmm. making that jump into energy medicine was fairly um, easy for me because I, I just was so unhappy that I was ready to go. Got it. Thanks for sharing. Now, you, yeah. you know, on the same point, the world of energy medicine has changed over the last 15 years and people have become more receptive than ever to alternative healing and medicine. But did you ever doubt or second guess your move, uh, you know, after entering the field, oh, sorry, before entering the energy medicine field, you know, when, where you were in between, sort of, you had to make a decision. Did you ever doubt or second guess your decision to get into energy medicine? From a heart level, no. I knew it was my life calling, mm-hmm. so I never doubted my decision to go into energy medicine. However, when I started running into trouble with money, I started to doubt it then. But mm-hmm. more from a logic level, like from this perspective of like, well, I should really get a real job and secure my future. Like, so from an intellectual level, I've had doubts, but from a heart level, you know, I knew I was doing the right thing and I still feel that way. No matter what challenge comes along, I feel like I'm really on my, on my life path. Got it. Now, not talking about challenges, you know, uh, you, you did suggest that, you know, the quantum touch and you, you did face some challenges early on. Uh, what has been, uh, some of the more challenging or uh, maybe a difficult situation for the company and yourself, uh, in all these years? Well, there's been two challenges overall. One has been the financial challenge of running out of money, going into debt, struggling with money. That has been like a big theme with, with me. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the other challenge is, is working with people and um, what happens when there's drama. And uh, so that's a whole other side, like working with drama and people and customers. So those have been like the two major, let's say, areas of growth for me is what do you do with the money and how do you work with the people so uh, you're not just constantly dealing with drama all day. Got it. And, and, and moving from challenges to something that has been rewarding for you over the years as the CEO, what has been the most rewarding experience for you at Quantum Touch? The most rewarding experience is actually when I get a chance to travel and mm-hmm. see how it affects people. Because sometimes when you're sitting at your office, you know, you don't always see the full impact. But when you have, um, like recently we went to Hong Kong and there was this mom who Mm -hmm. was holding her baby and she was so grateful because she, what she learned through energy healing helped save baby's life. And she came to us in tears and and we got to hold her baby baby and we were just like oh my gosh you know we didn't even know the impact mm-hmm. and then we had this amazing experience this lady was super grateful so it's like that actually is yeah. what really what i really thought to see somebody's eyes light up and know that we've helped them along their way that's the most amazing part oh that's so amazing and i think uh, quantum touch itself is an is such a powerful modality i myself have been able to you know reduce people's pain uh, reduce people's headache back pain uh, and and not just face to face you know across distances and sometimes it's difficult to really believe it until you've done it and sometimes the other person encourages you because they know the pain that they felt and how it is reduced so for me it is with every healing that i do i gain more and more confidence in not only in quantum touch but also in myself to be able to hold that energy field so that the person can heal so 
It's wonderful. Yeah, I love it. I love it, you know, because also it gets to the root cause of the problem, which I love. That's one of the big things um, that I'm really into is <laughs> let's understand and pick it apart and like fix it instead of mm-hmm. covering up, you know, and, and like, for for example, when I deal with housing, right, I'm yeah. the person that um, just slaps a new coat of paint over a broken wall or a problem like i'm like digging through the wall figuring out why is this broken <laughs> For, <laughs> oh, well, absolutely. yeah i'm one of those yeah. people i'm like the homeowner you know that makes sure everything's fixed um yeah. so same thing you know with the body you know like if like if you have a rash for example you know why why is your body doing that um for me that, that's an interesting question mm. and i like to really understand like well what's going on under the surface like why is your body reacting or instead of just you know go doing a temporary fix or um or slapping a lotion on there um really understanding like well why did my body react that way yeah it's a clue you know so i love that kind of stuff so there you go action tribe your body leaves clues any uh, emotional challenge or mental challenge if not taken action towards can lead to a physical manifestation of the problem and that is your body telling you to pay more attention to that you know to that root cause so once you find the clue and you resolve that root cause that's when things can become much better you feel better you feel healthier as well now uh, Jennifer you 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 shared uh, a bit before in the show that you had gone through some financial challenges and debt i think that was above $130,000 and many of our listeners actually are going through some sort of financial challenge in their life as well uh, you know either it's uh, f- uh, you know a debt an educational debt or maybe a mortgage so people and and debt can be a huge burden on a person you know limiting the ability of them to take action in their lives to experience happiness maybe to travel or to really uh, uh you know uh, spend more quality time with their families so when you were going through that financial challenge you know how did you what steps did you take to overcome it or what were you telling yourself uh, about the situation that helped you really you know, overcome that financial challenge. So, so debt. Yes, I was one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars of debt, both in mm. business and personal. And um, now I have no debt, and I have a bunch of savings. So I turned it around. Wow, that's um, amazing. I only figured that out in the last. Yeah, I, I turned it around in the last um, four years. In the last four years, I paid off all that debt, and then I have like a year of expenses and savings now. So, um, and. Before, I was just hanging out in debt, so I wasn't really getting to the root cause of the problem until I figured out why did I have debt in the first place and uh, and really examine that, like what created the debt. Mm-hmm. And so the first thing that I had to work with, which I mentioned earlier, was feeling like a victim. Um, I did feel like a victim. I mostly felt like a victim to God. I, you know, my my script that I said was, well, here I am, God, I'm doing my life purpose. You know, why, why is it? it a struggle. I mean, I thought if I did my life purpose, everything would just flow. Yeah. And um, and then I felt like victimized by the universe because I had debt. And so the first step was really unraveling my victim consciousness and, and saying, all right, I'm going to stop being a victim. Because what happens when you're a victim is it paralyzes you to really take any action because you're just waiting for someone else to fix it, right? In my case, I was just waiting for the universe to, to fix it. And I I wasn't changing anything. And obviously, if you don't change anything, then you're just going to end up, you know, with the same problem 10 years later, right? Yeah. So, so when I stopped feeling like a victim, when I stopped telling myself victim-y stories, I actually then was able to start actually saying, all right, I need to make a change because nothing else is going to change for me. It's me. I got to change. Yeah. So then I looked at, all right, so debt means that you're overspending or earning. It's um, mm. kind of you know, either one or both. So then I had to examine the root cause. Now I tackled my spending first because for me that was easier to do, but it was basically just something's out of balance with your finances sure. under earning. So I decided to tackle the spending first because I realized that um, I, I had debt because I spent more than I made. Right. So what I started to do was saying, well, why do I spend more than I make? Why am I spending more? And again, it's not because you're a victim of anything or circumstances or housing costs. It's you're choosing to spend more than you make. And I had to look at my life and say, well, um, I'm spending way too much on housing Mm -hmm. for what I make. You know, so look at what you make now. And and I had to come to some terms with things like I'm spending too much on housing. And I said, I need to 
simplify my life and cut back on what I'm spending. Now, it doesn't mean suffering necessarily, but I realized that I spent money on a lot of things that had very little meaning to me. Mm-hmm. And that was my biggest problem. So, for example, let's look at housing. I had a much bigger place to live than I needed Mm -hmm. or had meaning. Like I realized like I'm much happier in a smaller place for me personally. And so I cut back on my housing and and part it down and like having a smaller place. So to me, that was one issue. I was paying for a lot of things I didn't really need or even like. So (laughs) um, another example, yeah, another example is, uh, is for me, I was buying a lot of things that really, I was trying to fill some kind of void emotionally by buying stuff. Right. I'd, you know, I'd buy clothes, I'd buy um, shoes, I'd, I'd buy more food than I needed. I was always trying to fill something by overspending. Um, right. For some people, it's electronics. For some people, it's that one thing that you always buy over and over again um, that you may be even not even conscious of. Right. And... So it's like getting a level of awareness, like, am I buying something because I feel lonely or am I buying something because I love it? Mm. And if you, and I realized if I only spent money on things I actually loved, I'd be spending a lot less money. Mm -hmm. So when I started to take that attitude of, well, let's really look at, am I spending money on things that I love or am I just wasting money on things I don't even use or enjoy? And it really naturally cut back my expenses because I started to fill my life with things that I love rather than just things. That was a big learning curve for me. And and same with business. You know, let's look at business. Am I spending money on marketing campaigns that I don't enjoy, don't really love, don't really resonate with? Because you can spend a lot of money on on business tools and the question is is it something you really love and when I started to look at that and said well I don't really want to do the sales funnel or spend this amount of money on this program to do the sales funnel and I don't really want this conferencing tool because I really don't love it Mm -hmm. yeah you know I started to look at the business from that angle as the owner or um you know this employee and I we don't resonate with each other very well Mm -hmm. uh this isn't the right match you had to look at the tough questions too and uh, I started to go through and say, you know, what what areas don't work? What areas am I spending money on that don't really work? And I sure. naturally cut back a lot, you know, doing that. So that was a spending piece. Now, interesting enough, here's what I got really interesting. When sure. I started, like, naturally cutting my expenses to a level where I started living below my means. Yeah. And believe me, it wasn't that painful. Actually, it simplified my life. I started earning more. It's almost like I showed the universe, wow, I'm able to live within my means. See, I can be responsible with money. And the universe is saying, all right, great, we'll give you more. So Mm. it's kind of like balance what you have, love what you do have. It's almost like practice gratitude, but with spending. Right. You know, spend only what you love, have gratitude for what we spend on, and the universe will eventually say, all right, we see that you're responsible. Here's more money. (laughs) At least that's how, that's how it works for me. I think there are loads of things to learn from you, the story that you just shared. And uh, thanks for sharing it or breaking it down uh, on the personal front as well as on the business front. Uh, but initially, like you've shared, you felt like a victim, like you were doing whatever you had to sub- uh, you had to do or was supposed to do uh, and you were waiting for the universe to help you or to sort out the sh- sort out the issue uh, 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 and you had sort of like a victim consciousness like you mentioned and what you realized was that at a certain uh, certain uh, point you would have to take uh, proactive measures uh, take ownership of the situation that you were in and you sort of looked at debt in a whole new way you sort of really try to figure out what it really means and and you found out i love the i love the way that you broke it down you said that you either were overspending or you were uh, not earning that much right so either it was high, uh, uh, an issue with the expenses or the revenues on a personal as well as on the business front and you went to the root cause right and you found out or you tried to find out was it a choice or was it necessity and you realized that you were spending too much on housing and you asked yourself these series of really profound questions uh, that led you to making the right decisions and you found out uh, on your quest of uh, getting out of this debt you found out that you were making these purchase decisions that were uh, not really adding meaning to your life they were just filling an emotional void purchases like clothes and food and shoes uh, and you sort of uh, uh, try to figure out what is that void and then you realize that you that the solution would be to actually cut down on your expenses and what i found really interesting was the more that you started 
cutting down on these unnecessary expenses the more that you started living below your means you won the trust of the universe and then you started earning more so thanks a lot for sharing really really resonated with me yeah and you know it's really interesting um that that void right um trying to fill that void spending money mm-hmm. to try to fill a void um you know, I wouldn't say that necessarily I, I have filled that void <laughs> with, yep. with you know, but I just at least don't spend money trying to fill that void. You know, right. sometimes I feel lonely. I may feel lonely still. It's not to say that now yep. I'm all happy all the time, right? I'm not saying like I'm certainly not perfect and happy all the time, but what I'm saying is when I'm unhappy, I just I rest in that feeling rather than trying to fix it with a, an expense or a piece of chocolate cake or something, right? <laughs> so, absolutely. Um, yeah, because it's it's like it's okay to be unhappy, even if you're uh, spiritually uh, in a spiritual community or, or even teaching people spiritual things. Um, you know, we have our human side, and I think all the people that are out there teaching energy medicine or other modalities, we we deserve yeah. to be human as well, and uh, say, all right, we're having an unhappy day. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, giving ourselves permission to be real, rather than saying, up, oh, I'm going to fake it. I'm going to fake mm-hmm. that I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so. yep, yep, absolutely. So there you go, Action Tribe. Now is a great moment to really assess your life from the financial perspective. You might not be, you might be financially independent, but especially if you are not, then sort sort of uh, figure out what are the expenses in your life and what are the necessary ones versus what are the ones that are really filling that emotional void. Or maybe in the in the business front as well, are there any marketing campaigns that you are spending money on that aren't really uh, resonating with you, aren't really sh- you know giving you that reach or that exposure that you want? Are you spending on tools, marketing tools, softwares that you don't really need that are charging you each and every month uh, automatically on your credit card? Or are you doing any activities, marketing activities that aren't really growing you? You know, So cut them down, reduce and focus and be more mindful in that space. So thanks a lot for sharing those really amazing uh, um, you know, recommendations. Uh, Jennifer, for someone listening to the show right now who either has a small business or wants to start a business, what are some key foundations uh, for that person to run a successful company like Quantum Touch? So, um, well, I believe that the key foundations to a successful business are, first of all, all getting the finances aligned. So understanding mm-hmm. like how much you're bringing in, how much you're spending, and really get that sorted out so that you're making a little profit. And um, because finances, I think, is the most stressful part of the business for most people. And mm-hmm. it's also um, why businesses fail. So I, I think one of the biggest mistakes I made is initially um, building up too much infrastructure before we were ready, before sales matched okay. it. So that that can be like meaning like I did too many websites, too much office, too much office equipment, too much electronics, too much stuff before we actually had the amount of revenue coming in to uh, to justify it. And um, so, and it also depends. Um, you know, it's it. Business can take a little funding to start, sure. but I would say like be as conservative as you can with infrastructure because infrastructure can be really addicting because we want to believe mm. as, as business owners that we're, we're optimists and that is going to grow and fit into a larger infrastructure. So it's finding that balance of saying, all right, I want it to grow here. It'd be nice to build an infrastructure to support 50 employees, but we have one employee right now. So building a lot of infrastructure right away, I felt like is where I went wrong. So that's one area to really look at. And um, another area is, I mean, I could go on for hours, but another area is like building your team of people. And this is another thing that's really essential is that because if you have a great team of people, great employees um, that resonate with your vision, it'll save you a lot of drama, hassle, and hiring and firing people can be really expensive and emotionally taxing. So basically, Basically, the idea is to avoid firing people as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah so, if, and here's an example that I use, and I actually have a free business tool on my blog that I can give people that talks about how to hire people. Because mm-hmm. I think yep. a lot of my old tendency was to look at their resume and look at, at well, are they qualified? Look at them on paper. But yep. I made the mistake of hiring people in the past that look good on paper, but I didn't feel good around. They weren't right. the right. I didn't wasn't personally resonating with them. Like their energy just didn't feel right to me. But I'd say, oh, but they're great on paper, and I'm desperate for an employee, so I'll hire you anyways. That yeah. that was my hiring mistake. 
And um, also using expensive recruiting agencies, I realized that I didn't need an expensive recruiting agency because a lot of people on my own mailing list would love to work for us. Your own so community. So that was one area. My own community, yeah. So instead awesome. of trying to recruit people, right, one of the things that I did was starting to look in my own community of people that would stand out energetically. Like it was almost like the universe said, "This person would make a great employee." Well, she check in with them, see if they need a job. And a lot of times when I checked mm-hmm. in with people, they're like, "Yeah, I'd love a job." So <laughs> feeling feeling into the people around you um, rather than trying to recruit. Um, could be another thing. And I have all this information actually about hiring and firing on my blog um, at mm. jennifernoeltaylor.com. And uh, I have a whole free thing. I used, it used to be paid, but I have a whole free thing on um, building a team. It's a video and, and book, ebook, ex, you know, like an ebook. It's all free. Um, just because I did it a while ago. And it, I really resonate with my position on how to um, hire people. Super important. Got it. We'll definitely have that link up in the show notes. That's jennifernoeltaylor.com. That's where you can get all this abundant, amazing information uh, about how to start a business and how to hire the right people. And to access the show notes of whatever we've discussed today on this episode, to read the inspirational quote, book recommendations and other nuggets, go to my 7 forward slash 236. That's my 7 forward slash 236. Action Tribe, I hope you're taking notes because Jennifer is sharing some really amazing stuff today. Uh, if there was something that really resonated with you, then make sure you share you know, your, your statement or your message uh, on social media. What was your biggest takeaway that is that was shared on this episode so far? What did you learn so far? Share it on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using the hashtag My7Chakras and hashtag Action Tribe. That's my seven chakras and hashtag action tribe so that I can connect with you on social media as well. Now, before we move on, I want to commend you on the action that you've taken so far. Many of you have been on this journey with me since the very beginning of our show a few years back, and many of you have joined more recently. But no matter where you are in life, I totally respect you. It's not easy to make a change in your life, especially when the circumstances are hard. Maybe you don't have the right finances, health challenges around you. Maybe you don't have a supportive partner or friends or family. And maybe you've been trying to form a new habit again and again and again, uh, but you keep sliding back. The very fact that you are listening to this episode means that you are an action taker. So never give up and remember that your challenges and your suffering and your trials are in fact gifts in your life. Challenges are only temporary because with every challenge, with every trying moment, with every disappointment, you are getting closer and closer to your destination. If you can't find the answer, read a book, take a course like we're learning today, ask a person, hire a coach, or even ask your higher self, your intuition. There is always a way out. So be patient with yourself and kind to yourself as well, because this journey that you are on is beautiful. And like Henry David Thoreau once so eloquently put, not until we are lost, do we begin to understand ourselves. Uh, So Jennifer, as on today, what is your life calling? My is energy medicine and also connecting Mm. people with their guidance coming from their heart, which I believe um, is really where it's all at for me. It's helping people connect to their true heart, their truth. And with that, we've arrived at the last round for today, which is called the Wisdom Round. (laughs) Comprises of four questions so that our listeners can take note and take action. So what is the best advice that someone has ever given you, Jennifer? The best advice is to follow your heart. Name one personal habit that keeps you going. Personal habit that I do that keeps me going is I really spend every day at least a few minutes connecting in with what my heart is trying to tell me. So feeling into my heart and and, and letting, I guess it's my own heart meditation where I connect in and and download messages and um, so important. And do you have a morning routine? What do you do during the first hour of your day? Um, It's actually very short. Um, I set the Mm -hmm. intention for the day. Like what's the one thing that I want to accomplish? And um, I don't set mile long to-do list but i set like basically one major goal for the day awesome so name one book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners today um since we talked about money today uh one of the books that i love on this topic um actually it's on financial independence it's called your money or your life it's an amazing book on how to spend money where it has meaning for you and 
definitely been an inspiring book for me got it so thanks for sharing action drive i know how much you love our book recommendations and i know that many of you get these books as soon as you hear them shared on the show and that's why audible.com is offering action drive one free audiobook download with a free 30 day trial so that you can get to check out their amazing service now in case you haven't heard about this company audible has over 180000 titles to choose from for your devices iphone android or kindle including best sellers like the chakra system by anadia judith autobiography of a yogi by paramahansa yogananda and a new earth by ekar tole to download your free audiobook and start listening to a book instead of reading a book go to my7chakras.com/freebook that's my7chakras.com/freebook i absolutely love listening to books these days uh, because it's really easy while going to work or on your you know, when you're traveling or outdoors instead of reading a book so Once again the link is my7chakras.com/freebook. So Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh thanks for sharing those incredible stories and those nuggets of wisdom that our listeners can take away and also thanks for appearing on our show once again. Before you go tell us one thing that you're grateful for and how we can find you online. Okay, well one thing that I'm grateful for is I get the uh, joy of living in Hawaii, which is awesome. Oh, Beautiful nice. place mm-hmm. to live. And um you can find me by going to jennifernoeltaylor.com again that's jennifernoeltaylor.com and um on there i have the free blog i mentioned on the guide to building a successful team and if you sign up for my mailing list um i'll be i have a free gift coming up which i'll announce later and um also let you know my new book is out called spiritual and broke it's basically how to work with the money side when you're bringing your service to the world. So all that's upcoming and I hope you get a chance to check me out. Thank you. Awesome. So there you go Action Tribe. Uh you know, this was totally a synchronicity. Uh you, you know, the fact that you're writing the book and the fact that I reached out to you, you know, to chat about this particular topic, you know, it seems like uh it was meant to happen and uh I've also spoken to my community recently to understand what are some of the topics that they'd like to listen about listen to and many of them have uh, said that they'd like to learn more about entrepreneurship. you know creating a business scaling and growing a business so it seems you know like the right moment uh, action tribe if you want to learn more about this topic and if you want to uh, stay in the know about Jennifer's new book then you need to go to jennifernoeltaylor.com that's where you can sign up and uh, learn how to you know uh, become financially independent ultimately uh, so Jennifer thank you so much for coming to our show the second time talking to us about uh, entrepreneurship and growing your business and overcoming challenges and taking us one step closer to a human revolution. Great. Well, thank you so much. I love your show and I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and uh, thank you. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to my s e v e n chakras.com. Download your free gift, get inspired and take action. Transform your life today.